Alrighty guys, <clears throat> morning time here and you know, gotta do those chores first thing in the morning. Feed the lizard, make sure the dog has clean food and water, the cat's got food and water. But most importantly right now, we wanna make sure that our chicks are still doing well this morning and make sure that they have clean water and that they're not out of food yet. So let me show you how to do that and then I will explain some important information regarding Easter egg or chicks. So let's do that. Okay, so as you can see, we do have a very large mess going on in here. I've just been kind of layering the grass on for these guys, but today I think I'm going to take it out. And their water is dirty this morning, so we need to take that out and clean it. And then their feed is actually still really good. Now, you don't want to refill it until you know it's all gone so you have a chance to clean it once a week. Um, so, you know, I'll just keep an eye on that and wait until it's empty. Unless it's taken them too long, then I'll, you know, clean it out and just put some new feed in there. We just, we don't want them getting sick. Okay, so bring this into the sink here and we're just going to dump it out. And I try to get the grass and everything else straight down into the drain as best I can before opening it and spraying it everywhere. Not that it really matters much anyway, I guess, because I'm still gonna bleach this after I'm done since this is where we, you know, have our dishes and stuff. Um, now you can have your own little cleaner for it. I'm just gonna use a paper towel because I wanna be able to throw it away when I'm done, I don't want to have to keep a nasty, poopy chicken sponge around. So, get some hot water going. And then I'm just going to use regular dish soap. And I'm going to clean all around. Now, it's really important that you clean this anywhere from one to three times a day. Like, especially when they're so little. Um, you know, check it in the morning, check it in the afternoon, and then check it again at night. Because you don't want to just put your baby chicks in there anyway and just leave them. Uh, you want to check on them throughout the day and make sure they're doing okay. So you can easily catch things like pasty butt, or if one of them's acting lethargic, or if they're, you know, out of water or food or whatever the case is. So check on them several times throughout the day. Hot. Make sure that you rinse it off really well. Obviously, you do not want your chips eating soap, drinking soap, I should say. Okay, so now when it comes to filling it up, baby chicks, mine aren't even a week old yet, and so they get chilled very easily. So we're going to give them kind of warm water. I want it basically room temp. thing that we can do to help get some good you know gut bacteria going is adding Bragg's apple cider vinegar with the mother in it now it's one tablespoon for every gallon of water and my guys are so little I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit to their water not much at all we'll start with that and then we'll go ahead and add the lid which just comes down and slides into place, and then we'll flip it. This little area will fill up with water, and then we can give it to the baby chicks. But before I can do that, I need to fix the bedding real quick. Okay, so I have a bag, and I could grab a glove, but I think it'll be sufficient to just bring the bag in and scoop it up. Sorry guys, I know.
Okay. I have a clean slate here. Now I'll just take that grass out and throw it into the compost. And then we can refill this. I know, I'm freaking you guys out. Sorry. And I just pulled some more grass from outside. Make a nice little bedding. And then we can go and get their water. All right, so here's their water. Plop that on down in here. And the chicks are good for another day. Tomorrow morning, uh, well, I mean, I'll clean their water again. This afternoon and tonight, depending on how the water looks. Then tomorrow morning, I will add more grass on top since this will be all matted down and have feces in it and add another layer of grass just like I did um, until I clean this out. It, it's been in here for about four days and I feel like it was just time to change it because there was so much poop. You guys are little poop machines, huh? Okay, so everything you need to know about bringing home your Easter egg or chicks, um, some important information that you should know and uh, be ready for. Kitty, stop doing that. So, um, a chick is considered a baby between one to four weeks. Um, that's the time when they mostly have, you know, they're down, they don't have their feathers in yet, they really need um, the heat, um, they're really susceptible to stress and sickness, and this is the time where you really wanna be mindful and keeping an eye on your babies. Um, weeks 5 to 15, they're in their teenager stage. Um, it's when their feathers are grown in, you're introducing them out into their coop. Um, and then, you know, six, week 16 to two years is their laying years, where they're going to lay eggs for you, um, where the males will be best for breeding. And then beyond two years is when they're basically retired. And so, you know, if you're just keeping them as a pet, awesome. If you're doing it for food production, they, you know, maybe won't be the best ones to keep around um, since they'll mostly just be for looks at that point. Um, I wrote this down, so hopefully I would stay on track. So uh, heat and light requirements. When you first bring them home when they're a week old, you need to make sure that there's an area in their space that's 90 to 95 degrees, preferably 95 degrees. And so you can get a heat lamp to do this. You can get the little brooder uh, plates that do that. They're very expensive though, anywhere from 70 to $80 for one of them. Um, but the heat lamps do good. You just need to make sure that, um, you know, you put a little thermometer in there and monitor the heat until you get it where it needs to be. So that way, you know, you're not burning down your house uh, or, or hurting the chickens. Um, but you'll kind of know if it's too cold, they're going to be huddled together all the time. They'll be chirping a lot. Um, if it's too hot, they'll constantly be spread out and um, will never you know come together and congregate under the light so if you don't have a thermometer that's an easy way to check it um, with mine I'll put a link in the description to the light that I got it's been awesome it's a heat lamp but it's very you know uh, the heat is very specific to one spot and so I just have mine in a large sturdy cardboard box and you need to have a cool side of that box as well. So they need to be able to get where it's warm and then move on to a cooler area if need be. And uh, I just have the light on full blast so far for this first, uh, we're almost through the first week and they've done awesome. They go out and they explore and then they come back under the light and that's what you wanna see. So um, each week that you have your chickens, you need to reduce the temperature by five degrees. So when you get them home, well, first of all, when you go to buy them or when you hatch them, make sure that you mark that down on your calendar so you don't have to do it by memory. Um, mark it down on your calendar so that way within the next week, you can drop it down five degrees, five degrees more the next week, five degrees more the next week until they're at normal temperature where you can just turn the light off anywhere from 70 to 75 degrees and they should be there at about six weeks <clears throat> and that's when you can start taking them outside uh, for you know little durations of time until they're adjusted to the outside you don't just want to throw them out there you know unless it's warm enough um, it's better to in introduce them slowly you know a few hours one day a few more hours the next day and then the third day set them out there and definitely though make sure that they're fully feathered before you do that if it takes a little bit longer than six weeks that's fine 
um, and make sure that it's not extremely cold outside or rainy. So if your six week mark comes, but you're expecting, you know, temperatures of 30 degrees at night and, you know, some mist or rain, just hang on to them in the house for a little bit longer until the weather clears up or take them out during the day, but bring them in at night. That's an option as well. Um, it really kind of just depends on your area and how developed your chickens are, but that's kind of what you want to follow. Just common sense stuff. If you set them out in the rain and it's the first time that they've been out um, of your house and are in the coop, they will not know to go find safety and shelter. They'll just freeze to death, get soaking wet and freeze to death. So just keep a good eye on them. Chickens aren't smart, but they're cute. And uh, they are definitely like a great necessity for a small homestead if you want to have your own eggs and meat and stuff like that. So want to respect them and take care of them, but at the same time acknowledge that they are not the smartest animals on this planet. So um, make sure before you pick a chicken uh, that you, you know, obviously you know the, air, the weather in your area and the temperatures, but you want to make sure that you get a breed that can properly handle the heat or the cold depending on where you're at. Easter eggers seem to be hardy in both the heat and the cold, so that's why we got them here. My first pick was the Rhode Island uh, Red, but they did not have any more, so, and I really didn't want to buy them where they were shipped in because, you know, they're just not taking care of the best. I was hoping to just get it from our local uh, local tractor supplier, Cal Ranch, but they were all gone. But Easter eggers were uh, an additional bird that I wanted to um, add to a flock and so that's what they had and I was cool with that um, Space requirements if they're four to six weeks old, they need to have half of a square foot of space each um, Once they get over four weeks old, they need to have one square foot of space and then when they are outside in their coop They they do need to have three or four square feet per chicken So things to be aware of when you get your chicks like how many do you have uh, what's their coop going to look like? How big is the box that you have them in? Just make sure that there's enough space for all of them so they're not attacking each other. So they're getting, you know, um, they can get away. If, if you have it too hot in an area, if there's too many of them, they can't get away into a cooler area. So just be mindful of that. Um, the biggest thing that I wished I had thought of was my children and the animals that I have here. The cat as well as the dog. So... <laughs> I was so excited to get the chickens. I didn't even consider this. Like I knew I wouldn't want my kids handling them a lot, but it became very difficult keeping them in the back room. The kids can open the door. Um, and so what we finally did was put them in a closet and used a big piece of uh, thick plastic. Actually, it's meant for, you know, doing the walling on bathrooms and stuff that into the doorway so the kids can't pull it open. The cat can't get through it. But really be mindful, where are you going to put your chickens? If it's on your kitchen counter, do you have cats? If they're indoor cats, that's a problem. Like, how are you going to keep your chicks safe while they're in your home so they're not stressed out? Like, our cat actually has been really good with them, but uh, he hasn't been alone with them. And uh, it, when he goes up to the box, it stresses him out. So even though there's not a concern right now, he'll attack them. He's stressing out the chicks. And when he was in there, actually... And I think just from bringing them home, they ended up getting pasty butt. And that's another thing that I want to go over that you need to be aware of, that um, there are sicknesses. One was really lethargic. I was actually worried he, he she wasn't going to make it through the night. Um, and we got the cat out of there, uh, like no longer allowed in when we were in there. And um, got them through the first night, and they have seemed to do okay. Um, that entire next day, though, they did have pasty butt. So with all of them, I needed to take care of that. You cannot leave, um, for you know, even though it's crude, you cannot leave the poop on their butt or it will get caked on and they will not be able to use the bathroom and then they die. So uh, ours seem to be because of stress. So, you know, the light can cause that. Not having the correct feed can cause that. Not getting enough water can cause that. But uh, I've changed nothing except for making sure the cat doesn't go in there and they're doing great now. Got through that day of it. Um, with the pasty butt, just make sure that you do not pull off the poop. Like you'll rip out their feathers, it hurts them. Uh, with mine, I just ran them under the sink and wiped until it came off. And then I used a blow dryer about eight inches away and I had the chicken in my hand so I could tell if it was too hot. And I blow dried them until 
all their down was fluffed back up. You cannot put them back in there wet um, because they can, again, they chill easily and it can kill them. So that's one way to handle pasty butt. It is good to be aware of what the sicknesses are and what the treatments are. Um, Cause this was another thing that I wished I had done while I was at the feed store was get electrolytes for my chickens. Um, when they are sick or acting lethargic and have pasty butt and you just brought them home, it's a very stressful situation. Adding electrolytes to their water can really help them. Uh, so when you're out picking up your chicks, I would highly recommend when you get their feet, just grab a little bag of the electrolytes and have them on that for maybe the first week at least. Um, feeder and waterer. So that was the other thing. Make sure that you have one that works for your chickens, one that they cannot fall in and drown. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the ones that I use and they're really awesome. They even convert to being used for adults um, once they're past the baby stage, so that's cool. Um, you can add, like I showed you guys earlier, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar per gallon of water for these guys to get the good uh, bacteria and flora going in the gut. So since I don't have the electrolytes, I'm using this as an additional option. I just want to add slow. Um, I didn't, they're so small still, I didn't want to add like a teaspoon to their, to their water. So I just added a little tiny bit, maybe a half a teaspoon and, um, you know, they've been doing great. Uh, with the water, I went over this earlier, you need to check it bare minimum once a day. But if you love your chickens and you want to make sure they're taken care of, I would check it three times a day, morning, noon, and night. And even if you don't soap it up each time, maybe soap clean it once a day, but the other two times in the day, make sure that you're rinsing the water out and putting clean water back in. And again, very important, you're not using cold water. Will they survive? Probably, but you know, I just wanna give them the best start that I can. Warmer water is better for them, again, because they get chilled so easily. Um, the feeder, you wanna clean at least once a week. And since they're so little, there's no need to fill the feeder up all the way to the top. Just monitor it, you know, even if you had in enough feeder for a few days and then wash it with soap and water and clean it out and add some more, that's fine. That would probably be best for them. Um, the bedding, I'm just using dirt and grass because we don't treat our grass um, with any chemicals or pesticides or fertilizer or anything like that. If you do, maybe opt for a bedding, um, hay or pine chips, something like that. But uh, we're just using grass and dirt and they freaking love it. So it's free and they enjoy it so much. So that's something that you can do that doesn't add a lot of additional cost. Um, with the coop, went over this a minute ago, but make sure that however many chickens you have, you give them three to four square feet of space once they get out there. Um, the other thing too is you'll be introducing them at about week six if they're ready and they have all their wings and it's good weather. And you will want to make sure that you close off the nesting boxes. You do not want the babies living in there and pooping in there. Those need to stay sterile and clean for the laying of eggs. And so close those off, cover it with cardboard, whatever you need to do to keep the chicks out until they're of laying age, which is about 16 weeks. So um, I went over being familiar with the illnesses, especially pasty butt with the babies. And then transitioning out of the brooder, you do that at about week six. Um, do make sure they have all their feathers. Again, we already went over all of that. So I, I think that's pretty much it. The biggest things that I wished I had considered before I brought them home was the other animals that I have, the cat and the dog, since the cat is indoor. Um, I have small children, but they've been really good. Uh, they were opening the door and heading in there for a little bit, but we went over the importance of stressing them out and worrying that they would die. And so they've been awesome. And then uh, the electrolytes. I wish that was something that I picked up right away and had on hand for them. So let me know if this video was helpful for you. I know I did go kind of fast. Uh, if you want some additional information, please put that down in the comments and I can go over anything that you guys are interested about. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, that big red subscribe button, hit that. Um, ring the bell for notifications. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. God bless you.